Hey, this is Passy from Passy's World of ICT, the guy with the white hat and the Hawaiian shirt that's supposed to be purple. Do you know how hard it is to buy a purple Hawaiian shirt on eBay? Well, I do. I tried to buy one and I've got a red one. But anyway, they've promised that a purple one is on its way, uh, which we want for this new playlist we're making. And it's gonna be on doing games programming in VBNet. So look, we haven't made any videos for a while and we're actually not gonna make any for a while after this. Uh, the photography business is picked up a lot and we're very busy doing that and we're going to be traveling interstate to Sydney as well uh, for a couple of weeks so look this game's uh, programming uh, lessons they probably won't start until the end of October or early November but we thought we'd better get this out to you now so welcome to our game making course and let's tell you some of the things we are going to be doing so let's get into it all right, so our first one, uh, this is gonna be the beginner's course. It's gonna focus on developing fun projects and games using VBNet. So we'll start with really simple things and then work our way up. The goal is to learn our uh, programming coding structures. So although you be making games and having fun, you're actually gonna learn some coding structures and some things about VBNet, uh, which are gonna help you later on when you have to do serious uh, applications program. So these skills, they'll be transferable to doing business and application programs, which if you've been following our other playlists, that's kind of what we've been doing, uh, those sort of programs. Uh, but these ones are gonna be focused on a little bit more fun. So here are some of the projects uh, which we've got in mind for this course and we're currently developing. Uh, the first one is the classic jumping button. Now we won't tell you any more about this, but the idea is that you're supposed to be clicking this to win a million dollars and uh, you'll find out what happens when you do when you make that project. Okay, then our second project will be to make a talking digital alarm clock. So this one, you can uh, set the alarm for a certain time and it'll say a certain message uh, with kind of a robot speech maker that is part of VBNet and we'll be showing you how to do that. So that's a bit of fun, that project. Uh, the next project's gonna teach some toddlers or some kindergarten kids some weather words. So with this, there'll be options like they can pick the words sunny, rainy, or windy. And when they click on each of those, what will happen is it's gonna show them a picture of that type of weather, okay? So they can start associating, uh, when you put your umbrella up and it's all wet, it's been pouring rain here of a thunderstorm at the moment. I don't know if you heard that in the background. And yeah, that's uh, when it's raining, okay? So that'll be a bit of a fun project. Then we're gonna build onto that and make a top five project, which we've done with our students and they really have a lot of fun doing this one. So we just love guitarists. So we've got our top five guitarists here. And as you click them, they go in order. So we got Jimi Hendrix, Carlos Santana, Stevie Ray Vaughan, uh, and you can't click ahead. You have to go in the one, two, three, four, five order. So that's gonna be some programming structure there to make sure that people have to go in order and they can't just click anywhere. Or maybe you wanna do the top five strongest straw hats, which is uh, what one of our students did. Uh, basketball players, NBA all timers, of course, like Michael Jordan, or perhaps you're interested in rap music and you wanna do top five rappers. It's really up to you what you wanna do. It's just a matter of getting some buttons, some labels and some picture Boxes, so all kind of basic VB net skills that you're going to use in other projects that we do. Uh, we're going to just do a currency converter, work out money for other currencies. So if you're in Australia and you want to cash in $120, Australian, how much will that get you in different countries? And you don't have to do these ones. You'll be able to pick your own ones. Oh, the classic noughts and crosses is always fun. And it looks like the, uh, the O's here or the tic-tac-toe as it's called in America are in a bit of trouble here because uh, X can win either way. And it is player two's turn the O's, but they haven't got much choice. They can stop X here or stop them over there. And if you don't like the old X's and O's for tic-tac-toe, uh, why not make two characters versing each other? So you could do like Batman versus Riddler and make your uh, tic-tac-toe game like that with pictures instead. So yeah, we'll be showing you that one. That's a really fun one that our students have always enjoyed making that. 
the timed maths quiz about the only chance you got of making maths any fun at all. Uh, you need this is just one and you can set the difficulty of the sums that have to be done here. And that's an interesting project because obviously we can't just let it pick any numbers for dividing because 19 divided by 11 is going to be too hard to do on a timed maths quiz. Uh, so yeah, there's some kind of interesting programming there as well and using random numbers. Random numbers are going to be a big part of our uh, sort of game stuff. So we've got the number guessing game, which will use random numbers. The computer will pick a number and you have to try and guess what it is and as few guesses as you can. Dice rolling, again, random numbers to do that. We've already sort of developed a project like this in our other course, but we'll build on it and we'll uh, build it up so you can roll two dice uh, rather than just one dice. So that's gonna be a bit of dice rolling. Then you can use the dice roller kind of for other games where you might move along a board. So we'll try and make one of those eventually as well. Uh, random message generators. We've done that with Horrible Horoscopes, a previous project that's already on our uh, playlist for normal programming. And here you pick your star sign. Uh, what does the future hold for you? And when you click the tell me now, uh, it doesn't matter. It'll pick a random one, number four it shows here, but they're all bad. Everything's bad in this. You get a horrible horoscope. So it might kind of generate some different kind of random messages for different situations, or maybe a, a kind of a, a silly sentence constructor where you're going to pick bits and pieces. The computer will pick some things as well, and you'll just end up with this silly sentence. We might do something like that. Um, card games, of course, are a fantastic thing to program on computer. Probably the first one we'll do will be a higher or lower. So as the cards come out, you have to guess whether the next one's going to be higher or lower and you'll win points as you guess correctly. So uh, that might be the first card game we do. Then we'll try and move on to other games, um, kind of getting matching pairs, beating the computer for point scores, and hopefully even build up to making a blackjack game in uh, visualbasic.net, which will be a lot of fun. Uh, this is some that our students have done for projects and we thought they were interesting and they might be part of the fun and games uh, course. So. Uh, analyze Pokemon battle opponents. So when you log on here, what you can do is you can pick a uh, the one you're going to use, your Pokemon, and then find a Pokemon that this is going to be weak against. So what you do is you pick weakness. Okay, this guy's going to have a weakness. You click battle, and then it shows you the flying one, which has an advantage over your one. And if you pick strength here, it'll show you a Pokemon which is weaker than your one, okay? So it's just kind of a bit of a Pokemon strength uh, learning exercise there and program picker. So that's a bit of fun if you really like Pokemon. And the sports dream team. So we did start work on a tennis dream team previously. We'll finish it off into something more special like this. This one was done for the, uh, basketball, obviously, rather than tennis. But, you know, sports dream team is another fun project that will teach you a lot of really good programming skills like drop down lists, how to get text boxes come up, how to have the text saved in an external file and then bring it in and how to have many multiple different pictures appear depending on which player you've picked for different positions in your dream team and so on. So that has a lot of program learning behind it, that one, and it's a really good exercise. So have fun programming with VBNet and that'll be the whole kind of theme of this new playlist that we're making. But like we said, we're really busy with photography work at the moment. That's actually picked up surprisingly. And we won't be making any of these videos till end of October, early November will start. And then we'll try and churn them out every week or two, give you another one and keep working through them. Okay, so that's what's coming up on Passy's World of ICT. Sorry we haven't had any videos for a while, but other things happen in our world and we've got a day job too, which uh, takes up a lot of our time. And we'll see you uh, in the next lesson.